I'm Jennifer Lay from the Riverside BIA, and I'm just going to do a little introduction before we hand it over to Jessica, who's um, the artist uh, for the Serenity Experience. So uh, welcome, everyone. Um, I'd just like to start off with a land acknowledgement. Um, the City of Toronto acknowledges we are on this uh, traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. And it's now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. So I'd really like to do a short introduction to Jessica and the Serenity Experience in um, Riverside and uh, then hand it right over to Jessica. So Jessica Lynn, she's a Toronto-based visual artist um, known for her whimsical abstract landscapes and she, that she creates with her photographs. And uh, Jessica has adapted one of these pieces into an immersive installation called the Serenity Experience. Um, since its debut in November, 2018, uh, this installation has um, evolved and been exhibited in a range of locations, including her solo show at the Artist Network Gallery and at FIAP in Paris, France. The latest version is currently um, here and it occupies 115 linear feet of storefront space along Queen Street East in our own neighborhood of Riverside, Toronto. Um, and this version of the project has many interactive um, elements, which we will talk about later in the workshop. Um, these, these virtual workshops just being uh, one, one part of that. Um, and the, the installation as a whole, the Serenity Experience, um, grew out of Jessica's inquiries into what triggers our brains to feel calmness and happiness. And um, as I mentioned, it's part of a larger experiment into how we can deliberate, deliberately harness um, this to increase our own sense of well-being. Um, and right now, she's going to share with us a bit about the background, inspiration, and, and research behind that. And, and of course, um, you can use these ideas to empower yourself to feel happier, even in a pandemic. So without further ado, just handing it over uh, to Jessica. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. So I'm going to do a quick PowerPoint presentation and talk through previous versions of this installation and, and the reasons why uh, I chose the elements that I did. And then we're going to talk about how can you adapt this into your own home. I've done, I think, seven different versions and each place has been, I've had more or less degrees of control over what I had in terms of my surrounding or could I control the lighting or what I was bringing had to fit into carry-on luggage, et cetera. <laughs> so, um, and I'm very confident we can make something that's gonna work in your house. So that's what today's all about. And it's gonna be fun. Take three deep breaths together because I love doing that as a, as a way to sort of center and ground and, and everybody can arrive together. So everybody ready? We're gonna do in through the nose and out through the mouth all together, okay. In through the nose, breath one. And out. In. Out. And in. And out. Nice, thank you. I always find that a nice grounding thing. Okay, so I am on speaker view and I'm gonna screen share. Uh, here we go. And pop it in the chat if you're having any trouble hearing or seeing or anything and Jennifer will let me know uh, right away. So. Okay, here we are. Oh yeah, this is the prize pack. I took a picture of everything that we're including in it so you guys could see. So there's the um, some larger beads, a whole bunch of different assorted smaller beads. This light does this, it's called a kaleidoscope light. It does this crazy, it makes it feel kind of like you're underwater in your living room. <laughs> 
<laughs> which is cool. We used those in the windows uh, in Riverside in the installation. This one here is a battery powered. So you just put a couple of batteries in it. I think they're double A's. Um, so you can put it anywhere. You can put it above your window. You can put it in a house plant or whatever. So I thought that would be fun and helpful as well. And we're going to draw a winner at the end of the workshop. So this was just in case you have never seen it, the original piece that I made called Serenity. Uh, it's a physical two dimensional piece of art. It's five feet wide by three feet high. So it's quite big. Um, it's the first piece I made after I started meditating. It's photography. All my work is photography layers. So there's four different photographs in here that I've taken different parts out of and then layered them on top of each other. Three of the layers in this piece are water and water as it turns out is very calming and soothing to us and to our brains. Um, and after I made this piece and the more I sort of interacted with people standing in front of the piece, I realized I wasn't the only one who found it very calming and soothing. It like radiates calm and because it's so big, it's you can really get lost in it. It's pretty awesome. Um, so I sort of, the longer I spent with it, the more I thought, you know what I would love is to create a bubble of just this piece so that it's all my senses, so that it's everything I'm aware of. It's just me and, and the feeling that this piece gives me. Um, sort of as a, a <laughs> I'm gonna say a cheat, like a very, very simple way of accessing what meditation does. So meditation is amazing and you physically can rewire your brain so that you can deal with things differently and, and experience more calm, but it's also a practice. There is work involved and you don't always feel up to doing the work. So I wanted a shortcut. <laughs> I wanted something where I could do the work on days where I felt good. And then it would be there for me on days when I didn't feel good. So the point, the intent behind it was to engage with this piece using all the senses and to create something that felt like a hug to my inner child. Like, you know, if you see a little kid crying, all you want to do is just soothe them. And I wanted to be that for myself on those days that were harder. Um, and the ways I wanted to do that were by connecting to nature, to childhood memories, connecting to myself. Um, and also to community. We're, I think, <laughs> very aware in the pandemic that we're social creatures. And even if we're introverts, we need to feel connected to our community around us, whether it's strangers, coworkers, family, whoever. Um, so those were my original intents. And then the more I started researching, um, one book in particular that I would recommend is called Blue Mind um, by, Wallace J. Nichols, and he has a whole um, movement basically around the book and the research that they've done about how water uh, and the light sparkling off the top of water specifically as well, triggers your brain to feel safe and calm and happier. Uh, and he has all these programs that he talks about where they take soldiers with PTSD and take them kayaking or fishing or whatever to sort of activate the part of their brain to, to balance out the part that's feeling anxiety and stress and trauma. Um, this, I'm also taking um, a mindfulness certificate course now through U of T's continuing studies program um, and learning more about kind of the neuroscience behind it. So it turns out that in a technical way, what we're doing is we are activating our parasympathetic nervous system, which is the part of our nervous system that's involved in rest and digest. And it doesn't, um, it's not automatically where we go in a pandemic. In a pandemic, we're in the fight or flight part of our nervous system, which we've all heard of. And that anxiety is just getting layered over time as we're still in that state um, and different bits of news are coming up. So the parasympathetic part of our nervous system helps us digest that so that we can feel calm again and sort of anxiety down, calmness up. That's the goal. <laughs> so I had, these were um, the ways I interpreted the sensory aspects when I did the initial installation. And today we're going to talk about variations on that, what we can do that might be um, just using stuff that you have around the house or things that are particularly significant to you. Uh, so we've got four of the five senses and I'll explain why I didn't bother with taste. 
<laughs> so originally, and I'm going to show you a little brief video of, of what the installation was when I had it set up. It was just a five by eight foot hut. So you literally like three people could fit in it together. Um, and as you came in, you took a pebble out of the little dish and held onto the pebble, which is very grounding. It's also just a nice texture to hold. Um, for sound, I had, as you walked through, you walked through this curtain of beads and wind chimes. So the beads hit the wind chimes and set them off. And there was also an audio track of waves lapping on the shore. And then sight were the sparkly beads. I also have some behind me here and I'm gonna turn a light on. Oh, I can turn. You can probably see if I do that, see how they sparkle. So actually we'll leave them on, they're nice. Um, and then there's a video portion of the piece, which is the original 2D artwork. And then I've layered video elements over top of it as well as text. And then smell, I had an essential oil blend and it was cedar and pine and a couple of other blended oils to sort of soften the cedar and pine, just to give it a general foresty kind of smell. Um, and that was part of the connect to nature. It's also your brain is triggered to uh, feel calmer with those the trees let off. Oh my gosh, I can't remember what they're called. The trees let off these chemicals that, <laughs> that are soothing to your brain. And that's why walking through a forest is um, calming. Also patterns in nature are calming to your brain. There's all sorts of reasons, but. Uh, and then at the end of the installation, I wanted to give people a chance to reflect and contribute to be part of it. So you'll see that in a couple of different ways. I had a magnet board with, you know, those alphabet magnets from when you were a little kid that you had on the fridge. I had those with one iteration and then I had um, a little leaf that people could write on. It was a watercolor leaf. People could write on what their experience was. The reason I skipped taste when I did this as a public installation is because it seemed inappropriate even before the pandemic <laughs> to be giving people food randomly in, in public. It just it, it raised too many problems. Um, so taste, I would say, if we're doing at home, you can do it. That's sort of the exciting thing about when you're creating your own. So we'll talk more about that after and some ideas that we can use. So this is a quick walkthrough of when I had it as part of my solo show at the gallery. Let me see if I can get some volume here for you. And that's where the essential oils were just in the little bottles along the bottom. And then I had the, the branches in them to sort of diffuse the smell of it. And to feel like a little bit of a very sparse representation of a forest as well. Just connect that in. This was, and this I, I deliberately wanted to show this blanket fort version. This is the one I did in Paris and I had to do it with found objects at a residency where we didn't really have it was very bare bones what was accessible to us. So I had to borrow these blankets from uh, some of my friends at the residency. I brought the beaded curtains and the wind chimes with me. My point in showing this is that the version that you make at home doesn't necessarily have to be pretty. In my opinion, this was not a pretty version. <laughs> so it still did what I wanted it to do. And I'll show you the little video here. Um, but the point is to trigger your brain, right? If you, if it's really important for you to make something that's aesthetically beautiful, then by all means, please do that. Um, but it's not the primary goal. It's more about putting the elements together to make yourself feel good. What I loved in hindsight about the blanket fort version was that that is such a childhood thing. I didn't do that deliberately ahead of time. As I said, there were only so many things I had that I could use, but who hasn't built a fort out of blankets, you know, draped over chairs or couch cushions or something as a kid. So I sort of loved that. Oh, come on back. I love that tie in too. 
these were backyard versions. So I did one at my sister's place. She's in rural Eastern Ontario and we projected it at night. I did not anticipate how bad the mosquitoes would be in that case. <laughs> that was, it was less serene than I'd hoped, but the daytime version was beautiful um, in the trees. That's obviously not super appropriate this time of year, but just to kind of plant the seed in your head for once it's spring again. And these are two of the windows that we have currently installed with the Serenity Experience in Riverside. One is Dresden and one is eastbound. Let's see. You can see they, they all have, a ton, there are hundreds, thousands of these beads on the strands and then they're flashing the little blinking lights to kind of activate the twinkle in the beads. And then you can see on the ceiling of this right side one, oh, there it goes, but that's the blue underwatery looking light. And I think that's it. Let me let that one finish. Yeah, you can see the blue light up on the ceiling. There is also on the uh, Riverside BIA website, there is, um, I'm gonna go back to gallery view. I encourage you guys to do the same so that we don't have to look at my screen anymore. <laughs> um, oh, I can also do stop share. Here we go, perfect. Um, Hey, Cooper, <laughs> this is my nephew, Cooper. Um, so what I would love, and I don't know if you guys have any questions, feel free to pop them into the chat, but also what I would love is to go through the different elements and talk about what we can do at home with stuff that we have. So there is on the Riverside BIA website, there's all the links to the virtual aspects of, of this installation, including um, video tours, and it has all of the video clips of, you saw it briefly when we went into the installation there, but that um, the video portion of the Serenity Experience piece is about 25 minutes long in total. And for the, um, for the installation we have up in Riverside right now, we split that into six different parts. So we have it in six different locations and they're all clips around three to four minutes. So you can check those out. Um, all right, I'm gonna start with site and you guys throw things in the chat if you think of anything. Site is one of my favorite. I'm a professional photographer by, um, that's my past, I've been 21 years. <laughs> I've been a professional photographer, so all sorts of different types of photography. But what it means is I've spent a couple of decades studying light pretty intensely and how to control light and where beautiful light happens and comes from. So one of those things, and it shows better if I have that light turned off, one of those things was about having the, the actual beads themselves sparkle, but then you can see on the wall behind them how they reflect. So I love the idea of if you had a strand of beads like this hanging in your sunny window, then just as it sort of moves with air currents, or whatever, it's gonna move a little bit. It sends these little flashes around or as the sun comes in and out behind clouds. Um, I know my friend Kim has all sorts of prisms and rainbow sending things in her windows. <laughs> the queen of rainbows. Um, so that's a really, I love that one. That's what I've chosen for this installation to be sort of like the, the blinky lights, because when I read in that book about how the light reflecting off water was soothing to our brains, I thought that's amazing, but it's very impractical to have, especially in a public installation, some big basin of water that I'm moving and reflecting lights off of it. Just every version in my imagination ended in disaster. <laughs> So I thought, how can we do this safely? Um, at home, what you can do is, we've had this happen by accident sometimes. In the summer, the sun comes through our kitchen window. So if you're doing dishes, if you're like us and you have like a stainless 
sink and you've got a little bit of dish water in there, sometimes the sun coming in, reflecting off the stainless stainless sink or the water will make reflections on the ceiling that are really cool. Um, tin foil, so, or aluminum foil, or if you're like my husband and you're British, aluminum foil. <laughs> so I'm going to, I have another light here. Let's see if this works. Just a regular bit of tin foil. And you can see, can you see what that's doing on the wall there? It's pretty awesome. And this is not a great, I mean, in real life in your house, that's going to look a lot cooler than it will through a camera on a Zoom thing too. So you can do stuff like that and then you can play around with what if you crinkle it, then what happens? How does that make it different? It makes some pretty cool patterns. And that excites me. Also, if you did something like that, but put it in water so that it's kind of moving a little bit, anything where you can add a bit of randomness to it, I think is um, interesting. And I think a huge part of this is just playing, right? It's just experimenting and having fun with it. And really, um, it, it is childlike, like letting yourself go, letting yourself have no responsibilities, set aside whatever amount of time you want to, 20 minutes, half an hour or something, that this is the thing you're gonna play with. And it's your homework if you want. I'm assigning homework, everybody, <laughs> 20 minutes. Um, what else have I got? Oh my gosh, fairy lights or Christmas lights, whatever you'd like to call them. Those to me are magical wherever they are. So I've got a couple of house plants. I'm gonna show you quickly, but a couple of house plants here. Um, that we have put, let me see if I can turn it on. We've put little Christmas lights in just to kind of, and then they make cool shadows too. I don't know if you can see the shadows, but it's just something different. And I think that's essentially, um, these activities aren't necessarily gonna feel like you're doing something strenuous that's good for your brain. You just have to trust that whatever, we're doing is is doing the work it's happening it's in the background it can <laughs> you know it's very relaxing <gasps> candles is another favorite on my list um campfires are great but you can't start a campfire in the middle of the winter probably in your house so, <laughs> so candles are a good second choice um safety first always adult supervision um same with lights and water i should have said that as well <laughs> Anytime you have lights around water. Um, so what I love is, and I've only done this a couple of times, it hasn't, it hasn't always gone as well as I hoped, but if you have a hot bath, I love to get a hot bath. If you have a hot bath and you put candles in it, you can just put a little bowl like this with a couple of tea lights in it and float that in your bath. And if you can do that with the lights turned off so that the candles are the only real light, then what you also get, depending on how hot you like your bath, is the candles are gonna light the steam as it comes off the water. And it just, it feels, um, to me, it felt like a vacation. It felt like I was somewhere super exotic. <laughs> and it's really relaxing. It's so soothing to just watch these little candle lights bob around in the bath. So, that was another, what else did I have? Yeah, that's all I had for sites. So smell, as I said, I had essential oils, the forest ones. Um, lavender I've seen recommended in so many different places as something that's calming and soothing. Uh, citrus oils are generally invigorating, but can also like help you if you're having one of those days where you just feel like that. If you put a little bit of citrus oil here, give it a little rub, inhale it, take a few deep breaths, it can really sort of reset so that you have a more positive, you're able to kind of bounce out of that mood a little bit easier. Um, and that can be any of them, like grapefruit or even lemongrass, because it has a bit of a citrusy. Anyway, um, diffusers, there's like a million different kinds of diffusers, other than ones that you plug into something or that you just have the bottle with the sticks coming out of it. I would, in all of the scent ones, the one thing I would say is try to avoid 
the really um, artificial chemically kind of like those, I don't want to name names, but the plug-in ones, <laughs> that kind of stuff. If you can veer more towards natural things, essential oils, just as much as possible to keep the chemicals out of your house, basically, because um, that's also going to be better for you and your hormone balancing and everything. Room spray. I have a fantastic room spray that I bought from somebody that makes, they're in Quebec. I'm going to grab the name because it's beautiful. Karen and Doucette. Theirs is very nice, but you can also make this just by having a spray bottle and fill it with water and put essential oil in it and shake it up well before you spritz it around. If you spritz it onto a fabric in your room, it's going to hold the scent better. Um, maybe don't do it in the middle of your couch just in case it stains. <laughs> do it somewhere where it's not going to show, um, but you'll be able to enjoy it more that way. Hand cream is another good one. Um, especially if there's one that you can find that has uh, nice memories associated with the smell, any of these things really, if there are nice memories associated with it, even better. Um, scented candles, same thing. Uh, if you have, especially there are ones now that you can get that are, they're a bit pricier, but they usually are also a higher quality where they're made with essential oils and they're very, really nice natural kind of smells and delicious. Okay, that's all I've got for smell. I'm sure there's others. I'm sure you guys are gonna give me ideas. <laughs> I'm counting on you. I already know my ideas. I wanna know your ideas. <laughs> um, for touch, in the when I built the installation, I had people holding a pebble. Part of that is because I think, for me personally, I have so many fond memories of walking along beaches and picking up pebbles and bringing them home. Um, I'm sure a lot of other people would be the same, but they're also a really nice, depending on the pebble you choose, a really nice, soft, tactile, comforting. You can, yes, a pet. I just saw that one pop up. If, <laughs> if your pet will go along with it, <laughs> then yes, a cuddly pet is a great thing to touch. Um, bark is another lovely one. I have this piece as an example, just a little bit of texture or something that's kind of that palm size where you can hold it, but feel it and, and just give you something to ground, you know, that you're really examining it with your fingertips and holding on to it. Um, I also think if you have a favorite stuffed toy, whether you're a grown up or a kid, that's a good one, or a blanket, or if you have a piece of clothing that's really has just an amazing texture, like it's silky or it's soft, or it's for whatever reason, you just, it's really nice to touch, just something that's gonna kind of engage your sense of touch and oh this is one of my favorites also not super appropriate for winter but bare feet so if you're at home and you want to do this for a moment that's easy you can just even if your house isn't super warm it's just a minute it's okay and really put your attention on your feet let's do it right now I'm going to do it right now everybody who's up for it take your socks and slippers and whatever off <laughs> and feel whatever's under your feet like maybe it's wood floor maybe it's tile maybe it's carpet maybe it's your bed I don't know whatever but really like spread your toes out let them get right in there feel whatever it is is under your feet it's incredibly grounding if you're ever having a moment where you just feel kind of like things are starting to spiral in the wrong direction. It's very grounding to have your bare feet touching whatever ground is underneath you. Once the weather's a little bit warmer and you can do this in grass or in dirt, it's amazing. It's, <laughs> it's such a simple thing. Um, obviously, if you're somewhere like a public park, you have to be very careful where you're walking. Uh, if you're in your backyard or your front yard, hopefully there's nothing uh, as long as no one's let their dog <laughs> run amok in your yard, <laughs> you should be pretty safe. Um, sound. So I have a few for this one as well. In the audio for the Serenity Experience, I combined birds. These were birds from last, early last spring. In our first lockdown, I recorded birds off our front porch. Uh, there's a few trees. Wow, 
there's a blizzard. I had no idea. I just, <laughs> I just looked out the window and there, it's like I'm living in a snow globe. <laughs> awesome. Um, so birds and then I had the wind chime sounds layered on top of that. And then I also layered on top of that um, sounds of the water lapping on the beach when we were visiting a friend up north. Um, so I also had nice memories tied in with that one. That audio track is on the Riverside BIA website, the Serenity Experience website. You can access it wherever you are. Um, you can also, there's, you can just on whatever YouTube or something, you can search for uh, bird sounds, foresty kind of sounds. Um, there's loads of them, you'd be surprised. Another thing that I found interesting is Gregorian chants. If you've never listened to this before, give it a try and try it in the bath with the candles. <laughs> Combine those things. And if you don't come out relaxed, then call me and we'll, <laughs> we'll figure out some next level thing. I just found it so, like at first you're listening to it and it's like you're transporting to somewhere else, but there's also the particular, I'm, I'm not a neuroscientist, I apologize, but whatever, there's something about the Gregorian chants that they uh, they send your brainwaves into, is it the alpha brainwaves you want to access? Whatever the relaxing ones are, <laughs> the Gregorian chants uh, help you tap into that. So it's like, you don't even have to think about it. You have no effort. You just put that on in the background and it happens. Um, sound bath. If you've never heard of a sound bath before, again, you can probably Google it and many of them will show up. Um, some, I have found some not relaxing. It depends a lot, sort of like a guided meditation. If you don't like the person who's guiding it or talking through it, if they are annoying you, it's gonna not relax you. <laughs> so if you don't like the first one you try, just try a couple of others. Try a five minute one rather than a 45 minute one. Um, but essentially what it is, is, and, and everybody has different styles and different things that they use to make the sounds, but they have like these little bells or they have uh, the crystal bowls that they do the stick around or the Tibetan bowls. And it's, um, it can be really, really lovely. And again, that just, it goes directly to your brain waves. It's sort of, you may or may not like it on a conscious level, but your brain likes it on a subconscious level, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um, oh, so this, I used to, I mentioned that I have been a photographer for years. Uh, part of that used to be, I did weddings, but then I also did child and family portraits, baby portraits, newborns. And because of that, <laughs> because babies always cry when you show up to take their pictures, <laughs> almost always, um, through that experience, we had, um, there was one couple who had an app and I cannot remember the name of it, but I'm sure again, if you Googled it, but it was an app that had soothing noises specifically to help the baby be calm and go to sleep and whatever. And I think this one had whale noises or something. It was very underwatery feeling. Um, and I would say anything essentially that's designed to calm babies down probably calms grownups down. Um, too. You don't have to feel like a baby by listening to these things. Your brain is, is pretty much going to be calmed by very similar things. Um, oh yeah, water. Moving water is also a very soothing noise. Um, you know those rain chains that you see that sometimes people have instead of a downspout or a little water feature where it sort of makes a little boop, 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 boop noise? Those are nice too. Taste. So this is the one that I didn't include when I was doing publicly, but I have an experiment for you guys to try. If you want to incorporate taste when you do this at home is to whatever taste it is you're choosing, do it at a rate that's like 10 times slower than you normally would. I'm sure nobody here other than me eats way faster than they should. <laughs> But I eat, other than my niece, Charlotte, actually, she takes like an hour to eat breakfast. <laughs> she's, she's the slowest eater I've ever seen. Um, but as it turns out, she's probably the most mindful eater that I know. So if you take something like a grape or a raisin or a dried cranberry, whatever, 
and you really take your time, like smell it. Not all things will smell tremendously from the outside. When you put it in your mouth, don't bite into it right away. Like let it kind of roll around your mouth a little bit and feel what that feels like. And, and then when you do start to bite and chew it, do it really slowly and examine it like as if you're experimenting and you need to describe this to somebody after like really feel where do you notice the taste on your tongue or is it wet or is it dry or salty or I don't know not quite ripe yet <laughs> whatever whatever your experience is just really slow it down and be with it and that will um that will be very grounding as well I have one last little thing, and that is if you are going to do something very time consuming, like the beaded curtain, you're not going to do as much as I did, but it's, <laughs> there were so many hours. Kim had to help me as well, my friend Kim. <laughs> um, there, I think I spent 45 hours beading, um, and then I had two friends who also spent about a dozen hours each. If you're going to do anything like that, or if you're going to let's say for your thing to hold, you're gonna actually knit something, something where you're spending time and doing something kind of repetitive, then what I would add as a bonus element is while you're doing that, listen to a podcast about mindfulness or about the neuroscience of happiness research. Uh, there are loads of them out there. Um, there's even, there's a happiness, specifically a happiness podcast. Um, there's, there, as I said, quite a few, 10% uh, happier. Also, he has an app, but he also has a podcast, any of that kind of stuff. Um, and the reason is because I feel like as you're listening to it and creating it, that intent is going to go into it. It gets woven into it. It gets or knitted or whatever, but you're also giving yourself if you're like me, <laughs> it helps you to know why you're doing the thing you're doing. And it's, it can be really, really inspiring. I mean, what inspired me to start meditating in the first place was somebody, uh, I read in a book that 28 minutes a day for two months of meditating physically changes your brain. It changes the way the wiring interacts or whatever. And it also, there's part of your brain that actually grows. They can measure, and I can't remember what the part is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm not a neuroscientist, but I found that super inspiring that you could, you know, and it doesn't even have to be 28 minutes at once. You can do 15 minutes in the morning and 15 minutes before you go to bed, or guess what? You could just do five minutes and that's better than zero minutes. It doesn't need to be all or nothing. You can just do a little bit and it actually physically changes your brain, which means that you can change the way you react to things, which means you can change your life. I know that seems like a very dramatic you know, step in a small amount of time. But if you think about the way most of your days go, the way you react to what happens changes the course of the rest of your day, basically. If you can um, pause <laughs> and react with intent rather than just react with your gut, whatever. And right now, I think with, with anxiety levels high, I think a lot of people are... Um, our gut reactions aren't always what we would like them to be, <laughs> let's say. Um, so if we can kind of program ourselves to allow that space between what's happening and how we react to it, then that's, it makes a huge difference. We're gonna be a lot more pleasant to be around and people will be more pleasant to us as well. So, um, and even kids, I did make a specific note about that because there's all this stuff out there now for specifically mindfulness for kids. There are cards, there are, I'm sure there are apps because there's apps for everything. <laughs> but I know uh, the meditation app that I use, which is called Unplug, um, they have ones that are specific for kids that are just very simple and basic. I've done them with my nephew Cooper before. He really enjoyed it. We call it chill out time. Um, yeah, that's about it. So. The last thing I want to say before we talk about everything that you guys have shared here is whatever you end up making or creating or discovering or playing or experimenting, all of that, I would love to see it. So if you're on Instagram or Facebook and you feel comfortable sharing, um, tag us 
we have a hashtag, the Serenity Experience. And also my Instagram is Jessica Lynn Photo and then Riverside underscore BIA. And, and then we'll reshare that because I think it's really inspiring. Um, this is a year where we're very conscious of what's contagious. And I think happiness is contagious as well. And I think positivity is absolutely contagious. And I think the more we inspire each other and share this and amplify it, um, you have no idea what kind of effect that might have on the people around you as well. So I think that's very powerful. All right, so that's all I've got. <laughs> and thank you guys for sticking with all of that. Um, did you want me to read out some of the ideas? Or sure, yeah, yeah. Sure. That's Just to recap, um, so it's Jennifer here. Um, so for sight, um, you talked to, here's what everyone talked about, including you. Um, so creating shiny reflections with tin foil um, dishes off the sink, <laughs> um, Christmas lights on houseplants, um, cutting out foil star shapes, um, polished glass or crystals hanging off 3M hooks, sparkle lights around the bedroom and, and someone had a bird cage full of plastic balls that the lights were reflecting at night. Wow. Um, then smell. Uh, we talked about essential oils, lavenders, calming, citrus oils are invigorating. Peppermint uh, was mentioned a couple of mm -hmm. times and vanilla. Um, room spray, so fill a bottle with water and add some drops of essential oils. Um, scented candles such as vanilla or campfire scent um, and candles with essential oils being great. Um, baking brownies, uh, having tea tree oil with eucalyptus and lemon. And then for feel, we had cuddle a pet, touch a pebble, touch bark, pop bubble wrap, <laughs> um, <laughs> a blanket, piece of clothing that you love to touch, uh, take off your socks and feel what's under your bare feet and help to help ground you. Do it in dirt or grass or sand or, and have a weighted blanket. Um, and then for sound, uh, we talked about bird sounds, wind chimes, Gregorian chants, sound machine, uh, there's free apps such as Calm and Unplugged, uh, mm. Rain Sticks, mm. Sound Bath, uh, children's toys that have lights and sounds such as uh, someone had a turtle that did that. And then taste, um, just tasting things really slowly, uh, taking your time to notice the taste. Um, so there weren't per se questions in the chat, but lots of amazing ideas. Awesome. Is our main page at, at riverside-to.com and then uh, you just kind of go to happenings the serenity experience and you can see uh, you can click on each of these little squares so when you click on this you get you hear the soothing sounds you can listen with your headphones anywhere um, to that if you click on virtual tours you get into um, the whole um, map which has um, clickable um, locations uh, where you can see um, information about each of those uh, locations. You can see um, pictures, uh, the happiness tip that's on the window. This will bring you to the like virtual video experience um, about the business that it's in and again about Jessica. So there's lots of information even just on this map. Um, and then you can also, whoops, sorry, I clicked on it again. <laughs> you can also um, take part in our scavenger hunt, which is you do have to download a free app called Goose Chase, but it's really fun because a lot of people are participating and you share your own photos to um, uh, complete missions. And then at the end, we'll have some prize draws from local businesses. Um, there's also the happiness tips content, so you can see all the different happiness tips um, that are on the windows um, that Jessica has shared um, all together. Uh, and then we have, uh, again, the video content kind of on one page, so if you want to click through and see the different um, virtual tours, there is a full virtual tour, which is a nine minutes. And then there's some shorter ones for each of the locations, which are just uh, a minute and a half usually. 
Um, we've also got our serenity schedule, which you may have seen in order to sign up for this workshop. Um, so there's uh, coming up is Jessica's artist talk about the um, experience. And then there's a mini retreat um, in March. Uh, so, and she also has a handy uh, recommended reading list, which goes to her website um, with a number of uh, recommendations. Um, and yeah, that's about it. I think for this page, there's a couple more things here, um, but yeah, lots and lots of resources here for you guys to explore. Thanks everyone. And we hope you'll join us for some of the upcoming uh, things or just, you know, we'll see you on the scavenger, the virtual scavenger hunt or whatever. So. Awesome. And thank All you right. so much for joining.